There are two main sources of heat in your home. There are two. I would guess that 99% of the people in this school have one of the two ways that I'm going to diagram for you today to heat your home. The one idea is called forced air. Okay, and so that's going to be this one over here. Forced air. And then this house is going to have what we're going to call hot water heat. Oh, I know. Why is there? Now, I'll explain the basic uh, outline of what you see here. For forced air, you have, let me get a pointer here. You have a furnace in the basement usually, though if you don't have a basement, it's usually in a closet upstairs. Uh, maybe like something that's got bifold doors, the kind of doors that like accordion open and accordion shut. Oh, like in shut. the garage. Oh, yeah. Um, you might have it in a garage, garage. absolutely. Yeah. So you probably have a furnace either in the basement or a garage. And in that furnace, you'll have a fan, okay? And we're going to talk about what that does. And then, okay, usually in some homes, they have chimneys or they don't, but I usually do. They, they do. So nowadays, they're not needed. It used to be your house had to have a chimney for various reasons. We'll talk about that. The hot water heat example here, okay, in the basement, you usually, or in a closet, you usually have a boiler. And then with that boiler, there's usually a pump, okay? So what you should understand is that fans move air, pumps move liquids, okay? Yeah, Isabel? Is that why they have, like, the posture water company or whatever word it is? Um, they have that big screen that gets in all the dust from the air, it takes in all the dust from the air. Yeah, you, uh, furnace filter. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, because when you're moving air through a furnace, you want to filter out all the little, all the little dusty particle things. Dander, no. dust, no. fur, mold allergens, mold spores, things yeah. like that. Sure. Yeah, I guess right. Okay. Um, Jackson. Just like in like the wash, the washers have them too. Washers have similar. Yeah, they have. The dryers, um, dryers do. I won't touch it. Okay. I won't touch the fucking stuff. That comes I want that stuff. I yeah. can't touch this. That's Mr. Yeah. B. My mind. Hang on, hang on. We're getting off target here. I want to talk about forced air and hot water heat. Okay. Both of these models are going to use the three main ideas we talked about to move heat. Okay. They're going to use the following. They're going to use conduction. Which we think of as collisions between atoms, the transfer of energy through collision. Convection, which we think as the circular motion of air. Okay, we also think of it as expand, uh, float, shrink, sink. Okay, so we have convection, conduction, and then there's one more. What's the last way that we move heat? This is usually through invisible energy waves that carry high energy. When they strike atoms, they energize them and make them have a lot more energy. And so we'd say their temperature increases. What do we call this? Okay. Michelle uses this. So those red lamps that are on her. Yeah. Radiation. Radiation. Okay, and we kind of think of this as invisible waves of energy. That's bad because there's radiation in the house. There's radiation. Well, there's good radiation. There's bad radiation. Well, what, 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 what size? What house is this? Yeah. Which house? They both use it. You're gonna you're gonna use all three of these things here, and you're gonna use all three of these things here. So you might want to put this on both papers. Can you just put it on one basic paper? It's up to you. So, yeah. Okay. Now, you have furnace. We'll start with the four stair models, which has a furnace. Okay. What do we bring? What does our furnace use? What do we have to have brought into our house to make our furnace work? Anyone know? Air. Okay. It needs air, but our house already has air in it. What does a furnace have in it? How does it heat air? Fire. 
Okay, he needs fire, but to make fire, we have to have something. Yeah. Vents in it. Okay, there is vents, and actually those are built into the floor here. I'll show you how those work. But what do you mean, like? What does the furnace have to use to make fire? Yeah. Oxygen. Well, it's gonna need oxygen. But there's it's even something else. Okay, yeah. Gas. Gas. My dad was doing it. Okay. <laughs> so over here, I'm gonna draw it in green. We've got to bring natural gas into the house. Now, some of you don't have natural gas. You live out in the country. And sometimes out in the country, it's harder to have it. So this natural gas, the marker's not working very well. Natural. Natural gas is bad for you. Well, it's not bad. It's how we heat our homes. Natural gas, ladies and gentlemen, is what's brought into our homes. If you don't have natural gas, you probably have propane. Uh -oh. Oh, yes, Miss Penny Camp. Um, is the natural gas coming in? So when I draw an arrow, it's coming, it's coming into the Yeah, that would be a great idea. I'll add that to my diagram as well. Natural gas is, I'm going to draw a big fat arrow right here, is coming into the house. Wait, is that going through a pipe? Is there natural gas it does come pipe? through a pipe. Yep, usually black pipe. Black pipe is usually gas pipe in your house. So you have copper pipes or plastic pipes are usually your water and your disposal, your, your sewage. Black pipes are gas pipes. Okay, so they only use black pipe so if you, in your house for gas. So if you go to a closet or you go into the basement, you may see black pipes. Okay, and those were your natural gas pipes. I don't see them. Are they in the wall? They may be in the wall, but most of the time they're they're right there so you can see them. Because you need to have easy access to them. Wait, where are they in the basement? In the ceiling. Well, uh, I, I, they're going to come through the basement wall, they're going to go into the ceiling, and they're going to go probably to your furnace. And if you have a stove that takes gas to your stove, and if you have a, a dryer that takes gas to your dryer, usually only those three things need natural gas. Okay, Izzy? Um, don't you sometimes have gas lines in your yard? Uh, well, it has to come through your yard to get to your house, so yes. That's why I say I'm mean, focusing on this. You only need to be focused on this for right now, okay? So the natural gas does come through our yard, Izzy, and it comes, and so when we're digging in our yard, we have to be careful of it, okay? That's if what you I break a natural gas line, it's bad. Mr. B, I can't see the other picture that you're standing behind. I know, because we're not focused on that yet. Well, I'm trying to draw it. Not yet. You'll have plenty of time, trust me. Okay? Tom. If you do strike the natural gas pipe, what will happen? Well, natural gas will start to escape, and if it created any sort of spark and it lights the natural gas on fire, there's no way really to shut it off. So you have to evacuate the area, and then usually what ends up happening is you have to call the gas company to come out, and they have to contain the fire. Okay? That could be expensive. It could be very expensive. But how do they very contain dangerous. it? Huh? How do they contain it? They have to find the nearest local shutoff, which is going to be a huge valve in the ground that they're going to have to dig up and shut off. You won't have a yard for a while. So can yeah. like the whole neighborhood be burned down before this happens? Usually it won't burn down the neighborhood. It'll just create a flame, a flame at the point of the the accident. Okay. So your furnace heats up air with burn by burning natural gas. So what this looks like up close, okay, is you have this pipe. It's actually a lot like a grill, by the way. It's got holes in it. And out of these holes come the natural gas. Can you write that? You should draw it. Well, I don't have any room on my paper. I thought okay. I put it up and down. Natural gas. Can we make it small? What's that? Like, you can draw down? it in the other part of your basement. Because we're not going to use the space over here in our basement. Like, let's put it on the... Yeah, you can do it there if you want. So we have natural gas coming in. And when it's lit, it produces flames. Wait, that's how your grill works. It's exactly the same idea as a grill. Sure. And so then what happens is, is you pass air over this. Usually, do you want to pass hot air over a furnace or cold air? Hot. Well, the furnace creates hot air. Cold. Usually you're pulling, it's not usually that cold. 
Okay, it's usually room temperature. Yeah, room temperature. A little chillier. Okay. If you uh if you've walked into a, a lake cottage for the first time, oh. it might be cold. It's okay. freezing. We we have a basement that isn't finished and it has concrete floors. Oh man. Yeah. And we go in the basement after the like after it's been locked up all mm -hmm. winter and we go in there and it's freezing. Same thing. So we pass cold air over the burner and it heats it up so that it is then hot air. So you pass cold air over it, heats it up. And if that was it, and it used to be that was in our homes, if that was it, then that's all that would happen. It would heat up the air in the basement, and then usually what do we know about convection? Hot air rises. rises, and so what would happen is it would just eventually permeate your house. It would just, it would take a while, it would take a while but eventually it would just heat upwards, 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 and so usually the, house, the rooms at the top were the coldest for a while. And the rooms at the bottom were the warmest. My room is still, my room is still cold right there. At the top? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm right above the, I'm yeah. Gonna, Mary and I are going to be right above the uh, garage. So is my room. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's going to be a little colder. Yep. So you have the hot air, you have the cold air, okay? And it used to be, like I said, you'd have these massive furnaces. These furnaces were like the size of vehicles, okay? They would put them in the basement, then they'd build the house around them. They, they, you couldn't get them out. So for years, they what had these furnaces, to... and they were first coal furnaces. You might even have a coal chute in your house. What if you need a, a new door. furnace? Say what? Like what would happen if you needed a new one? You'd have to take a sledgehammer and break up the old one into pieces, truck it out, and then bring in a new one. How would you get the new one in? Well, you'd either have to cut a hole in the side of your house, or, or you'd have to find something smaller, hmm. or just use a fireplace. And so these furnaces, Jackson, go ahead. Hang on one second. They, they, yeah. They would, uh, sometimes they were usually coal. And so they had these coal chutes in the sides of the walls of the house. Anyone have a really old house? Wait, how old? Uh, I mean, uh, in the early 1900s. Maybe I mean, 1900 to 1950. No, my other one. I, I used to have watched, uh, in the Yes, you watched uh, uh, No, well, when we went on the ARC tour um, around downtown Fort Wayne. Yeah. In fifth grade, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of like older houses and... There was one like with like a furnace in the wall where you put the coal in and then the hot air went out the side. Yep. That they made little doors. If you see them, you actually can see them in the neighborhoods here. Mrs. Cunningham probably has one in her house, and she has a, a really old home here in Fort Wayne. It's beautiful. Uh, you have this these little doors in the sides of the houses, and they used to open up. And a guy would drive a truck around. This is all he did. He would shovel. It was really important. It kept people. We had warm. one of those in our house, but our house is really new. Like it's well. It's like on the side of our house, it's like a little door, like it's just a tiny little door. I don't know what it's for, but you open it and it has like, it like there's cobwebs and it's like. Oh, that might be access to either a crawl space. Because that's, it's this, no, it's the same spot where our fireplace is at. Because we have a fireplace and it's like our fireplace backs up to it and like. It might, do you have a wood burning fireplace? I don't, we have like a key that you have to stick in. Okay, so it's a gas fireplace. It may have been that your fireplace was, um. You may have been your fireplace was wood burning at one time, and that's where they would shovel the ash out. Oh, because our house is like, it was born and it was, not born. Your house was born. <laughs> oh, it was, <laughs> congratulations. It was, it was um, constructed in like the early 2000s. Okay. Well, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd be curious. Homes have weird little little things about them. I'm sure it serves a perfectly solid function. We I've never seen us use it. Like no. then it's probably not it's probably not a coal chute because we don't use coal. We haven't used coal for many years. But you can. The guy used to go around and shovel coal and he would shovel it into the basement, and then it would then you would go down every day and you put a shovel full of coal in the furnace and it would heat your house all so day. Couldn't someone coal. just like break into your house through that door? Like no, because it was usually. A huge conveyor belt? Yeah, that's Because most people didn't you. stockpile coal outside their house. No, 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 no,
The fan pushes hot air. I'm going to draw this in red. Pushes hot air out into your house. Should we do that? Okay. Through vents in your walls. Now, your vents might be on the side of your wall, might be in the floor. Sometimes the vents are even up in the ceiling. Uh, no, that's not as common anymore. That'd be bad because all the heat would rise and it'd stay up there. You're right, Parker. That's exactly why we don't do it anymore. That's very good. So we push all of this hot air out into the room, like so, okay? However, when we push the hot air out, the room has cooler air in it up here, okay? I'm going to call this cool air. And where does that cool air have to go? No, no. It has to go out of my house. Well, but it doesn't, because we're not going to open all our windows well, wait, in the wintertime. And then that blue pipe sucks it in. Okay, so you're saying the blue pipe sucks it in. Oh, you're right, Parker. Usually these vents, these what we call cold air returns. Oh, yeah. I think I have one of those in my room. No, I don't. Well, I don't know if Cold air returns, suck the air in. It's actually pushed. Wait, okay. Is, it, is there any like suction? There is a little bit. It's a little bit of pushing, it's a little bit of pulling. So we've got hot air coming in, floating to the top. Then it cools off, it shrinks and sinks back towards the floor. It expands, floats, shrinks, sinks, sinks. sinks. And so then it's pulled back down. Through another pipe. Yup, we usually call these ducts. And it's pulled back down into the furnace. And what do you think happens there? It's it's back back. Hot air. The cold air that's sucked in sucking goes back over the, the, the burner and is heated back up and pushed back out. And so what do we call, which one of these three, three things, conduction, convection, and radiation, does this most closely resemble? Is it Bella? Uh, convection. Very good, it is convection. This is how my house heats. You I think that's how mine heats too. Yep, this is how my house heats. Wait, our school is heated by the other one. Ah, you're right. Because we have this, a boiler room. We have a yeah. massive oh, yeah. boiler room. Oh, yeah, the one and in the if we area. have a little bit of time today, I'll take you down. Boiler room. Okay? Really? Like yeah. inside of it? Yeah. Well, we're not going to go in the boiler. That would be very bad. Ooh, no, no, no. Not, not, not the boiler room, yes. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. It's not the boiler. We have a boiler room. Okay. okay. You'll have to wait to see. It's that blue door. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands down. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Um, don't die on me now. <laughs> okay? This is forced air. This is a pretty simple way to heat our home. Notice that we're still using these ideas of convection. Now, I will ask you one thing. Right here at the burner, which one of these methods is heating the air? Right here. Oh, oh. Yeah. Radiation. Okay, it is radiation because it's giving off lots of heat. And which other one? Is actually two. Are you so proud of your story? Parker? Um, conduction. Conduction, because the fire is coming in contact with the air. It's collision. So there are actually hot particle collisions. Okay, so it's both radiation and conduction happening right here. But then once the air gets in the house, we have convection that takes over. Okay, Miss Pennekin. What about convection? Because that's circular motion of air. It is, but I'm talking about where the cold air comes into oh, okay. contact. With the fire. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is where is that located? The, Wh which which thing? The hot air, cold air engine. The the burner. Where would that be located? The burner is going to be inside the furnace. So what it does is it takes the air in from the outside. It takes the air in from the house that's cooler than the air coming out of the furnace. And then it just then it does the convection and. Mm -hmm. What we're really doing is we're pulling the cold air out of the house and replacing it with warmer air. And so when your furnace kicks on, and if you have a furnace, a model like this in your house, what's happening is you're just circulating all the air in your house back through the furnace to get re-warmed up. Oh. And so all winter, your house is going to circulate that same air through your furnace. Now, after a while, in the wintertime, hang on, hands down, in the wintertime, people start to get like, the house feels kind of stuffy. Because usually we've been circulating the same air in our house all winter. 
And so that's why we like to open our windows up in the springtime, because it lets all fresh new air in the house. We open it up in the winter. Sometimes we open it up in the winter, too. Sometimes Mrs. Bornheimer and I are like, stuffy. Okay, so we got to get that fresh air in there. That's why we use the term fresh air. But then why don't they just use the air from outside? That would be fresh air. I thought they used, no, we use, I mean the furnace. They use ah. the air in the house. I thought they used That's a great idea. idea. That's a great question, Isabella. And let me explain why. I think, pay attention to her question. Why don't we pull really, 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 really cold air from outside into our house? Does it take too long? Well, which one's going to require more energy to heat up? Air that's already been heated up once and is kind of warm, or air that's really, really cold from outside? Which one's going to take more energy to heat up? Uh, Miss Lalonde? The air from outside. The air from outside. And your parents are probably have talked about energy efficient, trying not to use too much natural gas, no. so they can get their heating bill down because they don't want to pay too much on their heating bill. Sorry, sure because if they have to pay a lot on their heating bill, then it gets mm -hmm. the pocketbook gets a little tight. See, here's what happens. If we pull cold air in from outside and try to heat it every time we try to heat our house, okay, first of all, there would be nowhere for the hot air to go because the hot air pushes the cold air down. They can make a new vent for it. Okay, they could make a little bit, they can make another vent to let some of it go out. But then here's the problem again. We are using a tremendous amount of gas to heat the house. It'd be like putting your furnace outside and trying to heat your neighborhood. It would just oh. run and run and run and run and run. Thousands of years. Maybe they would be red. They would. All right. I think we get the idea here. Let's. If I want to get through this one so that maybe we can take a small field trip downstairs Woo! to see what our boiler does. Are we really allowed to? We'll just peek in. Sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the boiler or the hot water heat house. Okay, and this particular house also is going to require natural gas to come in. I'm going to draw some natural gas here. Let me get my green marker. Natural gas has to be brought in the house. Where? Okay. To the boiler. By the way, the boiler uses the same kind of burner, but instead of heating air, what does it heat? What does a boiler heat? Yeah. Water. It's water. But and then and then the like the water will evaporate and the evaporation from the gas will come in the steam and the steam is hot and it goes to your house and heats your house. You're very close. We never get it hot enough to become steam. But why don't that like make your house what like wet? What we do? What's that? Why don't that make your house wet? They keep heat the humidity uh, down. Why don't it give you popcorn feeling? Let's shh, let's talk about how this works. Parker, you're on the right track. Parker, you actually described more how we power plants work than how the heating in our home works. But we're going to come back to that idea. It's very good. So we have natural gas come in. The boiler heats it. So I'm going to draw the burner for the boiler. But this is where it gets a little different. Okay, We have the burner for the boiler. Natural gas comes into the burner, just like in the forced air. And we still have fire. Oh, yes. By all means, we have fire. Fire! Can't go about that. Fire. We have fire, but instead of it heating up air, we pass pipes over top of it. Oh, then there's air inside the pipes, and the pipes go with that, and the heat goes Not air inside the pipes. There's water. But cold water comes in the pipe. And hot water leaves the pipe. Okay? So cold water comes in. And hot water. A hot water heater is a small version of a boiler. Yep. And we use that to heat our water for our home so we can have hot water come out of our faucet. But now this hot water has to be forced into our home. And so what happens is, is if you look here, the hot water comes out of the boiler and it drops down into a pump. And that pump forces the water up into the house into something called a radiator. Our radiator's right there. You're right. Yeah. 
It makes a lot of noise in the fourth grade room. No, in the fifth grade. Fifth grade room. Mr. Terrible said it was drum room. Okay, radiator. Now, here's the thing about a radiator. Where? Oh. And I want you to kind of draw your attention over to the room over here a little bit. And I'll get a video of this on my phone to add to our discussion. Take a look off. over here, and if you need to um, get up briefly, just avoid the camera, come around real quick, okay? Come over here and take a look. He took the safety guard off. Yep. Okay. Here's the radiator. I want you to notice here on the right-hand side, the pipe coming up through the floor, and it comes in here, and then there's the radiator along the wall. Notice the radiator is above, or excuse me, below the window. Okay, windows are the coldest part of your house. It's snowing. It is indeed snowing. <laughs> it is the coldest part of your house, and so we put the radiator near the window to try to counteract the effects of the window, which cools off air in our homes. And notice the radiator is long, but what I really want you to pay close attention to as I scoot forward here are these things called the vents, or these little ridges, which are kind of sharp, so don't touch them. And they're on the pipe of the radiator. Okay? They direct air. Well, they kind of do. What they do is they heat up with the pipe, and they t can touch more air. And so, therefore, because they can touch more air, they can heat up more air quickly. So, so if these right there were bigger, like... Oh, like yes. Bigger, it, it would heat up faster. It would heat up faster. Do radiators mm -hmm. heat faster than furnaces? It just depends on the size of the house. Typically, they can do the same, they can do the same job. There's just benefits to both. And there's disadvantages to both, which we'll talk about more when we talk about air conditioning. What kind of house do you have? I have forced air. Now that we're back, we have radiators in our homes, just like the one you just saw. And the radiators, first of all, they come in contact with air. And through collisions, heat up the air around them. That hot air rises. So let's say it radiates, or the air, cold air comes in contact with it. And then that hot air rises. What happens when the hot air rises? Yeah. Cold air, cold air comes down? The cold air has to come down. And actually what happens is the cold air comes down. Back to the vibrator. And it comes back down by the radiator and heats up again. And so do we still have the same kind of circular motion yeah. going on? Yes, but I will tell you it happens a lot um, slower. The other thing a radiator does is it radiates, okay? It does, through conduction, collide with cold air particles, or particles have less energy, okay? So through conduction, it heats up the room a little bit. And there are these invisible waves of heat. How many of you have ever been close to a radiator when it's on? And you can feel the heat on it from far away, okay? Yeah, that is the invisible waves of energy you're feeling. And when those radiate out into the room, they strike air particles and heat them up. And so we get the same thing yeah, happening energy. there as well. And so energy is then conveyed into the room and it heats it up. Yeah. Is that what's in like hotel rooms? Hotel rooms sometimes have those, and sometimes they'll have much, much, much smaller versions of this. Like you can set it yourself. Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes hotel rooms will use, instead of natural gas, they use electricity. Space heaters use electricity to heat up the air. Space heaters aren't good. Space Am heaters I? are like this. Miss Lalanda. So on the forced air one, yeah. where would the, um, like that, the mesh go? Where would the air go? Oh, the thermostat. It the thermostat is usually placed in the center of your house. Okay, we're going to call this T for thermostat. It's usually placed in the center of the house where the warm and cold air are the most mixed so that when it is fully warmed up, the thermostat can either shut the furnace on or off, or in this case, it shuts the boiler on or off. But you said it would be weird if it was near the kitchen, and ours is quite near the kitchen. Yeah, mine's near the kitchen too, but there's a little bit of a separation there. It's not, it's not right next to the stove, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, ours is like...
Right. Hang on. Parker, you're on something great there. If you have, let's say, a fireplace in the room where the thermostat is, when your fireplace heats up that room, the thermostat never kicks on. So what happens to all the other rooms in your house? They get cold. They get cold. <gasps> that happened to they us yesterday cold. because my, I, my bedroom's upstairs and we had the fireplace on last night. And I went upstairs and my room was cold. Yeah, because the heat hadn't kicked on because it didn't think it needed to.